Dearly beloved in Christ, it's my pleasure to, to celebrate this Mass with you and for you once again. For Life Teen is back, and if Life Teen is back, then our joy is back. Thank you very much for being part of this wonderful ministry of youth formation, either as the youth or as ministers or as parents supporting the formation of our kids. There are so many talking points in today's liturgy of the word, but I do understand that young people don't like long messages. Huh. So I will do my best to keep it short, if possible. The gospel text today presents us with a very strange parable, a parable of the dishonored servant or steward. Unlike last Sunday, we, we, we had three beautiful parables that were direct to the point of emphasis. This particular parable is to be carefully looked at, lest we misunderstand it and understand and fail to get the message of Christ. This parable of the dishonest steward is simply an analogy. Christ uses this to challenge the people of light to do more and be more goal-oriented. So it says, if those who are dishonest, if lovers of money take seriously the security of their source of money, how much more the children of light, the lovers of salvation, should take seriously the business of their salvation. So we are not by any way encouraged by this scripture or parable to consider dishonesty on our way to heaven. Dishonesty is no pathway to salvation. But however people are bad, there's something good about them. No one is completely evil. So in looking at those who are lovers of money, who consider material things much more important than spiritual things, we could take one or two lessons from them. The kind of passion that they show about the things of this world. We too should be that passionate about our salvation. If they use this honesty to protect their interests, we ought to use this on we ought to use honesty to protect our own interests. If they are generous with unclean money, we should even be more generous with our hard-earned legitimate income. The dishonest servant was praised by his master because of his consciousness of the future. He was so mindful of what the future would hold. So he was swift to plan ahead. What plans do I have for my future? What plans do you have for your future? And the most important future ahead of us is eternity. Where am I planning to spend my eternity? A big question for you and I to answer as we journey through our earthly life. In the first reading today, we listen to a very strong, firm prophet, Prophet Amos, 
who was a very, very brutal speaker. He spoke the truth without sugarcoating anything. He was not diplomatic about speaking the truth. He was a champion of social justice. So he spoke against social injustice of his time. He condemned the disparity that existed between the rich and the poor. That the rich, who do we are very, very pious, who would assemble in the church just as we are assembled this evening, we are still insensitive to the needs of the poor. He called them out, letting them know how true religion had fizzled out of the nation of Israel and how empty their celebrations were if they did not consider or had any care for the poor. While he complained about their insensitivity to the needs of the poor, he also lamented even more the fact that many had become rich through the exploitation of the poor. And these, he made them know, angers God a lot. In our time, too, we are faced with this reality. Assembled here this evening, I sense a great sense, a sense of devotion to the Eucharist, for we are gathered around the Eucharistic table to do Christ his due honor. It's such an amazing celebration where Christ is worshiped at its highest point. But the Christ that we worship in the Eucharist is the same Christ that is in the poor. So if we give him reverence here in the church, same reverence too is to be paid to him wherever he is found. And he is found most abundantly in the lives of the needy. So it becomes a big contradiction to celebrate and to worship Christ in the Eucharist here and to go out and be insensitive to the needs of the poor. If at any point I sense a surplus in my income, if I ever find out that I have more than I need, that is an indication that I need to extend a helping hand to somebody. We are even required to make sacrifices for others, to inconvenience ourselves in order to make others comfortable, to impoverish ourselves in order to enrich others. Such is the expectation of our religion, for it is the true religion. We can do this in different ways. No one is free from this expectation. For we all have one thing or the other that we can offer, that we can bring to the table. The gospel today and the first reading challenge us to make wise use of our resources to make responsible use of our wealth. And the gospel goes on to tell us that if we are not trusted in little things, how can we be trusted in greater ones? A good number of us in this congregation are young. We are relatively inexperienced. And it is very easy at this stage to procrastinate. Oh, I will do this when I'm older. I, I, let me just have fun at the moment. I tell us. 
It is practice that brings about perfection. If you are not faithful as a young individual, listening and respecting your parents, you are going to struggle eventually, most likely. Even when you become adults, if anyone here is not faithful as a single person and gives into fornication, there's a red flag that even when he or she is married, adultery may be a consideration. So discipline begins from now. If we are not trusted in little matters, then we may not have the opportunity of greater ones. It is on the basis of what we do with the little opportunities we have that God will increase our responsibilities. We are challenged on this day to take seriously whatever role we have been called to play in this life. And the demand before us is so big, so huge, that we do not give half to Christ. It's either we're giving our whole self or we are giving nothing. He demands total submission to us. And that is why the gospel says, we cannot serve both God and mammon. The choice is ours today to make either to be radically for Christ or to be radically for money. But it is most important that we must expect an end to whatever we do in this world. There will be a day of reckoning, a day of accountability. We all must answer for all the positions we have held all what God has given to us, for we are all stewards. Whatever we have in our possession, we are not really the owners. We are only caretakers. When the account is required of us, are we going to be found wanting? The decision is ours today to prepare for that day of reckoning. May God bless us and his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.